Hey y'all, it's Jamila and I'm back with another short tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to use Adobe Photoshop to create clipping masks using text layers and also images or your Photoshop brushes to create these clipping masks. These are pretty popular with sublimation. You see this method used a lot when doing tumblers and also shirts. I've seen it also used on other things. But before I get started, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and turn on the bell notifications. And when you're done with this video, I'd love it if you leave me a comment telling me what else you would like to see and hit the thumbs up button. Let's get into it. I already have my image imported. I just picked a random image. You choose whatever you want. And then I'm going to type out my text. and make it bigger. So let's turn on the um, image layer and I am going to free transform my text so that it is where I want it on the image. So I use command T or you can go up here to edit and then down to free transform and I'm just going to make this bigger so that it fits the area that I want it to fit you can also make your um, letters go closer together which I am and to do that you go to your character map or you go up to window and then character um, and and it's right here so you can use a slider or you can use the drop down or you can type in the words. I like to use the drop down and just use the presets they have in there. And I don't want them to exactly touch, but I want them pretty close together. Readjust my text again. And then the layer that you want the text to clip should be on top or image. And I'm going to show you how to use an image to do the same thing here in a second. But um, make sure that your image layer is on top. You can either right click and scroll down here or go up here to layer, create clipping mask. And then you can um, still move your image around in there. I need to adjust this because my end is hanging off the edge there. Um, so I'm going to select both of these layers and free transform the whole thing just to get it back on there. And from there, um, you can still make adjustments you want to make the adjustments to the, the layer that is below the image. So maybe I want to add a shadow or a stroke um, to the layer just to make it a little bit more visible. And the letters are too close together so I'm going to readjust that. You would save this as a PNG file. It doesn't really matter um, whether you have the background layer on or off when you go to save because unless you have a white toner printer, it's not going to print that white part anyway. So now I'm going to show you how to use a shape or a Photoshop brush to create the same effect. I'm going to delete my text layer and create a new layer. And then I'm going to go up here to my brushes 
and these are some brushes that I created myself they are a semi-transparent brush it'll work for this so just put your brush stroke on the canvas and you can kind of see what I mean by semi-transparent you can kind of see through it and if for some reason if you end up with a brush that's transparent like this and you want it to be a little bit more opaque just go up here change the color I'm changing it to white and then duplicate the layer and you just keep duplicating until it is opaque enough for you and then you can um, merge all of those layers together so I'm going to move this to the back because obviously this uh, the image is our clipping mask and I'm going to follow the same process that I did with the text So obviously this needs to be adjusted a little bit so you don't you don't have to um, unclip the mask or whatever you can move it around in here um, till you have it where you want it and again you can add things like drop shadows or um, strokes or whatever you want to add to your image the only thing you would have left to do is to export it if you're using an image like this for sublimation then you would just print it from Photoshop but if you're using printable HTV or printable vinyl or something like that you would save it as a PNG image if I am using my images from Photoshop to Cricut Design Space, I always save on a transparent background because that saves you from having to clean up the image later. Hopefully this video helps. Like I said, I did this video because I had done a reel on Instagram and a lot of people were asking for me to do a little bit more extensive video. So here it is. Thanks for watching.